All right, good afternoon. Here's the latest on Hurricane Idalia. Unfortunately, continues to intensify. In fact, we can even do some uh, satellite analysis here. So the developing eye is here. In fact, occasionally we can see that. Uh, you know, this, these are the winds of a Category 1 hurricane. This is the pressure that would support a Category 2. Uh, and that's why we think it's a given it's going to be a Category 2. Uh, even if you don't have all the numbers, if you want to do satellite analysis, once that eye becomes distinct, and what I mean by that is on an infrared satellite picture, uh, if you can see the eye, then that means it's basically a Category 3 or going to become a 3. Um, so if you don't have the information from the latest Hurricane Hunters, um, that's what you can be watching. That's what we will be watching. As far as motion, now that it's becoming so organized, uh, you can basically see the eye is moving almost due north. In fact, you can see the coordinates here, 24-6. So this is 25 north, 84-8. This is 85. So they're saying the it's, it's going to continue moving right about like that. Now, of course, on the Gulf Coast, any little wiggle to the right or the left uh, will be significant as far as what's going to happen with the hurricane. So here's the overall forecast. Has not significantly changed really from what we've been talking about since last Saturday. As it looked like Edalia on last Saturday would make landfall southwest of Lake City. It looks like that's going to happen. Now minor adjustments again are going to make for big adjustments in what happens with the storm surge on the Gulf Coast. It won't impact our weather much here when I say here, I'm talking about all of northeast Florida and southeastern Georgia, but any little shift to the west means the um, wind damage potential decreases for places like Jacksonville, St. Johns County and Flagler, and then increases for areas farther off to the west and the northwest. So there's the forecast again going for a category three. Might it become a four? We can't rule that out, but that's why we use the term major hurricane. There's five scales, but once we get to category three, four, and five, we call them major because the damage uh, starts to reach the catastrophic level, at least right on the coast. Now, uh, once the hurricane makes landfall, uh, then of course the hurricane will not be as strong. I hesitate to use the word weaken. So here, of course, is Columbia County. Here's Live Oak. Uh, if it goes exactly as forecast, and we'll see some wiggle still, if it goes exactly as forecast, it's going to make landfall just up the coast from Steenhatchee which means the Steenhatchee areas. Here's Cedar Key, here's Steenhatchee, which means the Steenhatchee area potentially could have a uh, storm surge of 10 to 15 feet. That's not the surf, that's the level of the Gulf of Mexico, and then the surf on top. So here is uh, Live Oak, here is Lake City, and of course Columbia County. If it went exactly as forecast, then that would have Columbia County on the western eye wall, or the right side. Uh, those of us here in the Jacksonville area well, I'll tell you what, we're going to break it down as far as what the winds are going to be. So now we're going to look at that same forecast track, but we're going to look at the winds. So the outer shell here you see, those are the winds of tropical storm force. Now, that's significant, gale force, but really for most of us, unless you're out on a boat, that's not a big deal. Here's the big deal. Now, of course, the hurricane force winds are right there with the eye wall. They only extend out about 20 miles from the eye wall. For those of you in Columbia County, that's a big deal. For the rest of us, we're actually going to be watching this shell. Those are winds of what we call 50 knots. It's about severe weather level. Think gust to about 60. So if you're wondering where will widespread power outages occur, uh, it'll occur within this area here. So this is about when the worst of the weather will be. This will be about uh, 11 to noon. And notice this does take the core over Baker and Union and then over Jacksonville's far west side and then western Nassau County. But you can see why now that slight wet um, nudge westward but takes the eye wall over Lake City then means that for many of us, as long as it goes as planned, then we'll probably just have isolated power outages. But it will continue pretty strong as it heads to the northeast. So fully engulfing those of you in the Okefenokee area. We're talking about Ware, Pierce, Brantley, and Charlton counties, then into Camden, and because it's going northeastward, we'll catch you all in uh, Glen County as well. So that's where we're going to be watching the wind event. There's going to be some rain with it, but I think the wind will be the main concern. We'll have updates for you with this hurricane until it's out of here.